Okay, so we're going to look at a quick speed test for the 2D shell mesh aerospace rib. Uh, this will involve importing the geometry, mid surfacing, 2D shell meshing, checking the element quality, running analysis verification through normal modes, and then exporting a production ready model. The full process will complete in less than 12 minutes. Okay, so we'll start by importing some geometry. You'll notice on the left hand side, uh, left hand corner we've got a timer running showing how quickly we can process this information uh, so bringing geometry in so it's a, a typical uh, aerospace rib uh, thin wall machining uh, we've got a single solid within the model browser tree um, so first of all we're, we're going to start by mid surfacing so again because this is a thin wall in nature it makes sense to use shell elements so idealizing the structure into a thin shell form by mid surfacing. So we're using the incremental mid surface and this picks out adjacent surface pairs. It's done a pretty good job of uh, finding the pairs. It color codes them to see what's matched up. So we're going to edit those color coded pairs. You can see for a given stiffener, uh, just matching those up um, for both for the vertical and horizontal stiffeners uh, and for the um, uh, the rest of the webs and the um, the flanges at the top of the rib as well. Uh, so once we've got those complete we can then extract the mid surfaces from those mid surface pairs, uh, select the middle mass button to accept, so uh, very quick and straightforward in an apex, hide the solid from view and we can look at the surfaces that have been extracted so it's got a, a unique set a set of unique surfaces at, at present. So we're going to extend surfaces using the, the default um, dimensions and Apex runs through and, and snaps uh, adjacent edges to surfaces very quickly. Um, so just now some manual editing um, based on the uh, the original uh, geometry definition, definition. So Apex is pretty good, but of course there, there is some uh, manual stuff that needs to be done. We're now going to defeature. So we're taking out the chamfers first of all, uh, above and below uh, uh, the two sets of dimensions that Apex has pulled out. And we can see now it yeah, simplified the geometry very quickly. Uh, zooming in onto one particular region where we can see that the surface extension hasn't quite worked as we intended. So just a manual operation to snap those surfaces across. Um, straightforward. And we can see in the left hand corner we're down to two minutes. So we've nearly got a full uh, surface definition after a very, very short time indeed. Uh, this is all real time, nothing's been sped up in terms of the play. I've, I've recorded this but I'm talking over the recording so I'd have to concentrate on recording and speaking, uh, rather uh, running Apex and speaking at the same time. Uh, so some manual uh, deep featuring going on, and again just simplifying the mid surfaces. Got some chamfers, chamfers on the additional regions that Apex didn't recognise, probably because they're not uh, maybe on a flat surface or that type of thing, but again very quick to um, to remove so just a final or just a chop on the edge here just to smooth off that curve fillet again we, we want to try and maintain a good representation of the rib but we're going to remove any superfluous features that we don't need so once we've got the mid surfaces defined we can uh, look at the shell meshing we're using shell meshing in this case with the element quality check to understand whether we've got any uh, sliver surfaces or any overextended surfaces which would be shown up as uh, poor quality elements. So once we've done that check we're just going to take the, the mesh, or rather delete the mesh uh, temporarily um, just to carry on working with the geometry. Um, so remove vertices just to give the, the meshing algorithm a bit of a head start in terms of not needing to pick up on um, edges or faces it, it, it doesn't need to respect. So you can see now we've got some thickness changes in the original solid geometry so we need to split the underlying surfaces to respect those geometry um, or the, the, the 3D transition in in, in thickness. Um, I'm actually going around now and picking edges for a surface I haven't selected so you'll see I have to repeat this operation in a moment but I just wanted to illustrate some of the issues that, that can happen. So go back in uh, and select these surfaces um, so escape and then uh, selection the middle button to accept the surfaces turn pink as they're live from the selection inputs and then pick out the edges that we want to split the surfaces by and again middle mouse button to accept uh, take the solid out of view and we've made those splits if you zoom in we can see um, so 
pretty good representation just a vertex edge drag or vertex drag I should say just to snap the uh, the edges together as we as we want uh, for this middle region we've got a, a thinner pocket in the original solid definition so again splitting those surfaces so we've picked the mid, the mid surface and now we're selecting the solid topology edges uh, which the splitting operation will take place through and then hiding the solid deleting the original surface just the featuring these fillets out of the geometry and then we're going to uh, use the filler surface to, to fill that area back in um, so pick one edge and it will automatically work its way around the, the trim surface effect to, to fill in the, the geometry as required so we're five minutes in did a pretty good job um, so again another vertex edge drag where we've uh, the, the surface split hasn't quite worked as we intended as we look through the model we've, we've spotted another couple of chamfers which we need to defeature again simplifying the geometry giving the um, simplifying the, the meshing task as much as possible so shell meshing with a formal element edge length using the mixed trying quad uh, with the auto algorithm and we can see that we've got um, mesh defined for all the fastener holes. For, for a typical aerospace application shell mesh like this it would m typically make sense to have hard points at node cent uh, hole centers I should say and then to actually remove the hole from from the model um, especially if you're in, into looking at load transfer across an interface or bearing bypass through a joint you need a hard node to connect up to uh, an idea that's fastener connect, uh, connection such as a C-bush and then good quality regular elements at those hard points so we can see now if we zoom in we've got um, the blue um, geometric points which are respected in the underlying shell mesh so once that meshing operation has taken place the auto algorithm has done a again a good job with what we're doing uh, but we just need to use the quad or iso mesh just to tidy up the, the mesh definition around some of those fasteners again to give us very regular square elements in the critical joint or the, the, the joint locations so again very quick to do that so uh, the, the mesh is updated in respect to the hard points um, so now looking through we can see one area where the mid surface hasn't met at the natural cruciform if you like at the interface between adjacent mid surfaces so we're just going to manipulate that geometry and we're doing this live so the um, as the geometry is updated the mesh is updated alongside that so saving huge amounts of time in terms of mouse back and forth so once we've got the uh, topology uh, the foundation for the topology set up we can create a filler surface um, where we want the, the new web to go middle mouse button to accept the mesh updated based on that geometry and then we're just going to extend the um, the surface up and then we're going to split that surface based on the profile of the, um, the the 3d geometric rib web or rib stiffener in that region um, so you can see split the surfaces um, by line and by point to point as we're doing now and then we can just pick the two endpoints and route up the, the split as, as we require and then vertex edge drag just to snap that edge across to um, the, the cruciform where the other mid surfaces join together um, we can do that on both ends and once, once we drag the vertices apex sees that the uh, surface is split and we can now delete the original uh, template surface for, from, the, from the model so again just go back in and, and uh, mesh with the mix dry and quad auto algorithm and that gives us a, a good quality mesh in that region um, so once we've got the meshing defined and just looking now we, we can see we've again a couple of um, areas which we failed to defeature or missed when we did the original defeature operation so again uh, very trivial to do that a single click operation little mass book to accept and the model is updated so we're now checking surface normals so the shell normals are shown as pink on one face and blue on the other so we can just check for or check and then manipulate the model consistency such that the surface normals are all pointing in a similar direction um, so we need to just pick one element from a given surface and then the whole of that surface is flipped over so we've now got a, a fully consistent definition we can check the actual normal direction uh, normals pointing outwards we want them flipped the other way so we're just going to 
um, switch everything over and we've got the model uh, or the surface normals defined as as we wish so taking the surface normals back out of view and we can look at the mesh topology edges so we can look at three edges shown in red shared edges in green and manifold or three edges coming together shown in yellow so we can just turn those on one at a time and that makes sense in terms of the overall model description so there are no cracks in the mesh whatsoever uh, final check on element quality and um, we've got no invalid elements and uh, massively dominated by good quality elements so assigning a material to the model so again this is the full process we're 10 minutes in uh, we've got all the, the uh, geometry and mesh updates done um, setting the Poisson's ratio uh, modulus Poisson's ratio and density for an aluminium 7000 series so again just typing the numbers in directly we, we can set the units as, as we uh, as we go so we don't need to think about converting units and then putting the uh, the CAD geometry back into view and now using the auto thickness algorithm uh, based on the uniform thickness so every surface will see a uniform thickness definition uh, so Apex is, is um, querying the underlying solid and developing the properties to suit and if we show the um, the result in 3D thickness and compare that with the CAD we can see the, um, the the good representation that we've got for discrete regions. Now this model does have a number of different webs and stiffness of different thickness but Apex has taken care of that for us um, by, um, by signing the properties directly from the CAD so once we've got the model defined we can just run a quick normal modes analysis so this is just a verification run a free free normal, mo normal modes analysis just to make sure that the model behaves itself we can check the modes we can check whether everything's tied together properly uh, th theoretically we check the model mass as well uh, so go back into post-processing and just double check now so for free free analysis modes 1 to 6 will be 0 mode 7 plus will be the elastic modes and we can just look at uh, the displacement um, and a fringe plot of displacement or strain energy and then just cycle through the, the frequencies to make sure that um, we've got what we want and you can see that the model is fully verified and ready to go so once we've got that model defined we can simply go into the browser tree and export the model into a MSC Nastran run ready deck format in the blink of an eye. So we're up to 12 minutes. Um, so just naming the deck, setting the units for export. So we can export to any unit system we want. We could switch from uh, English to metric or vice versa, uh, depending on the supplier. And the deck definition is complete. We just look at the location in the browser. And there we are. There's the MSC Nastran deck format. So we're done.